please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Captain's Log, Supplemental. We were successful in our bid because, yeah, that's a thing for certain types of inmates, to house a former politician. We take great pride in subjecting them to what we call the Valvinus Chop and or the Reek Readjustment. Hello everyone, welcome to the Halls of Injustice. Today we welcome inmates number 156 to the ISO cubes. As you may have noticed from the Captain's Log, yes, we have a former politician, although in this case, they had a very short time as a politician, turns out they were crappy from the offset. And rather amusingly, I have in fact covered them before, back when I made political videos over on the Moiski Live channel, with the more recent one being from three years ago, titled Jared O'Mara's Twitter Hacked. Inmates number 156 name is, as you now know, Jared O'Mara. And while Jared O'Mara is not going to be with us for all that long, we can certainly talk about how his career spiralled out of control at an alarming rate, considering his rise to prominence and who he succeeded, which is a damning statement of that person, as MP for Holham in Sheffield, where he was born and raised. So let us begin this video by talking a little bit about who Jared O'Mara, aka inmates number 156, is. Inmates number 156 was born in Sheffield in 1981, educated at Tapton School. He graduated from Staffordshire University with a first class honours degree in journalism before entering politics. He was a local school governor and volunteered for Sheffield based disability information services and charities. The reason why is something he actually championed quite early in his career. This was the fact that he was the first autistic MP in history, along with suffering from cerebral palsy and hemiparesis which is paralysis of half your body, essentially. Before he was elected, he actually stood as a Labour candidate in various Sheffield Council elections, along with supporting Jeremy Corbyn's election as the leader of the Labour Party in 2015 and 2016. Because of his loyalty, in 2017, Jared O'Mara was selected for the constituency of Sheffield Hallam in an emergency selection process for the SNAP election under the control of the National Executive Committee and Regional Boards, rather than by the local constituency party. The seat in question had been held by Nick Clegg. O'Mara's campaign had focused on disabled people's rights, protecting public services, and of course using his personal background as validity to his claim of dealing with these problems. At that time, Labour were having a bit of a national surge in votes. They also tried to latch on to a rather laughable idea that Nick Clegg was too anti-Brexit by voters. He wasn't too anti-Brexit, he was just anti-Brexit. Sheffield Holm itself had actually voted to remain in the EU back in 2016. O'Mara himself also supported Remain. Progress and Momentum supporters backed O'Mara during the election campaign and he won the seat with a majority of 2,125 votes, kicking Clegg out of office. He had essentially shafted people when he was in office as deputy PM in 2010 to 2015, the students more notably, so it was inevitable his career would die. During his short tenure, he campaigned for a second referendum on Brexit. He was very much against fracking. He never asked though an oral question in the House of Commons. He gave a maiden speech, which is linked down below. Essentially, he just championed the very things that he campaigned for. However, his downfall began in 2017 when he became a member of the Women and Equality Select Committee, because a number of comments he had made over a decade ago before he became MP were revealed by the Guido Fawkes website. Basically, what he'd said was, sack Sarah, one of the members of Girls Aloud, and the remaining four members come have an orgy with me, and that Michelle McManus only won Pop Idol because she was fat. He referred to gay men as pufters and fudge packers, and referred to jazz musician Jamie Cullen as a conceited see you next Tuesday. These comments did not help him. He had claimed that the use of these words were part of an Eminem record he listened to at the time. The following day, he was accused by a Sheffield bar worker who had met through an online dating app of having made transphobic slurs towards her in 2017. On the same day, it emerged he'd been posting derogatory comments about children in Sheffield and appeared to advocate corporal punishment to deal with delinquent youths. Labour Party then, in turn, 
quickly, <laughs> announced an investigation into Jared's conduct but didn't suspend him. Revelations were made public in late 2017 where he was found to have used certain slurs, insults that were considered more racist on a Morrissey fan site in 2002 by saying that Danish people were pig shaggers who practiced bestiality and referred to Spaniards with other derogatory words. A key trait of Jared and Morris is that he was rarely seen in Parliament, in the Commons more notably. He had claimed it was a number of issues, one because he couldn't do a tie-up because of his conditions, which was relaxed in late 2017 anyway. He claimed also the shouting and heckling was anxiety triggering for him, therefore his zero tolerance policy on shouting and heckling was preventing him from performing his duties. In 2017, December, a press statement explained that Jared Amaro would be on leave of absence on the advice of his general practitioner, who had discouraged him from attending Parliament. After three months, he returned and voted on the report stage of the European Union withdrawal bill. In July of 2018, he announced he would step back from his parliamentary duties. This coincided with a series of votes on Brexit negotiations, which Amara had unsuccessfully applied to vote by proxy. This lack of attendance for votes, key votes no less, continued into 2019. He had cited an injury in the shower. There were other issues though. He never responded to any issues that his constituents brought to him to deal with in Parliament. He was never in his office. So after a series of calls from his constituents to resign, Omara decided to liken that to a hooligan on the terraces threatening the referee whilst drinking flat lager and smelling of processed meats. He was, by Change.org poll in 2019, voted the fifth worst sitting MP, quite the lofty achievement. Now, he was eventually readmitted into the Labour Party. In July of 2018, he announced his resignation from the Labour Party, declaring that he had not been listened to or given a fair investigation following his suspension, and that the party no longer shares his commitments to the true definition of equality and compassion. The Labour Party, in turn, affirmed that it would continue to provide support for Omara, this was on orders of Jeremy Corbyn, who was in turn concerned for Jared O'Mara's welfare. In 2019, Jared had said he'd never been reinstated to the party and that Corbyn had made false reports about him being a mental health danger around Parliament. Also in 2019, two of his aides resigned, he fired two more members of staff and a fifth resigned in solidarity. Three of the aides later took O'Mara to an employment tribunal. Yeah, that didn't end well for him. He accused them of being ableist. Um, uh, his mother, uh, wrote to the court in 2019 to say her son was destitute and penniless. He he kind of got screwed, you know, because uh, also in 2019 he was accused of sexually harassing a 20-year-old employee. Omara had sent WhatsApp messages to the employee often late at night in which he, well, he revealed his love for her. Yeah, um, not so good. Um, but it gets worse because also, in 2019, he was accused of corruption. Uh, and that, oddly enough, ties into his Twitter account being hacked, because a lot of that was shared on there. His um, former employees did that. His career ended in July 2019 when he said he would stand for re-election at the next election, but then said, nah, he's standing down from House of Commons because, nah, nah, he can't. The stress, man. So, after leaving Parliament, he got into trouble. Legal trouble. And this is quite long. I had to give you a decent biography, though, because honestly, his short career is quite funny to me. Tragic, but funny. Now, there were a number of allegations going around during his short career. Allegations of fraud. And in August of 2021, the Crown Prosecution Service announced that Jared O'Mara had been charged with seven counts of fraud by false representation. He had, when he had the opportunity, pleaded not guilty to those counts along with an additional charge under the Proceeds of Crime Act. The Proceeds of Crime Act is an act of parliament which provides for the confiscation or civil recovery of proceeds from crime and contains the principal money laundering legislation in the United Kingdom. Essentially, you've done this, we're taking your stuff. As his mother had said he was destitute and penniless, I doubt he had much to offer. Owing to COVID, coofness, and I'm sure other delays, nothing really happened until January of 2023 when this went to trial at Leeds Crown Court. So ordinarily I would now go through the Proceeds of Crime Act, but honestly it is so vast I wouldn't know whereabouts I'm starting to make this accurate for all of you to save you from having to suffer me reading legal text for however long it took for us to find it. So instead we're going to go to the trial of Jared O'Mara along with the sentence. 
And I also believe that he uh, has been submitting fake expense claims to the government very recently. Have you got any proof of that? Yes, I'm his chief of staff. He is a member of parliament. Right, so he's, what's he sending false for? Uh, false expense claim to the tunes of thousands of pounds. To who? To IPSA, the governing body for the members of parliament. Sorry, who? Uh, the House of Commons, the UK government. Is a member of parliament. So, so what proof have you got that he's saying to need false expense claims? I'm the person that inputs his claims for him. And what's your name, please? My name is Gareth Arnold. I'm his chief of staff. Who's your employer? Jared O'Mara, MP. Jared O'Mara was not the only person standing trial. In May of 2019, because of these staff resignations, Jared hired a blogger and digital marketer as his new chief of staff called Gareth Arnold. Gareth Arnold also had to stand trial for these six charges of fraud. On the first day of the trial at Leeds Crown Court, the prosecutors alleged that Jared O'Mara had attempted to claim falsely nearly £30,000 in a bid to fund a significant cocaine, sorry, sherbet habit. The court was then shown messages between Gareth Arnold and Jared O'Mara referencing Jared doing Sherbet instead of going to Parliament. So when he had cited his anxiety because of the confrontational nature of politics as reason for not being there, he was partially correct. An anxiety no doubt brought on because he needed a hit. Over £19,000 of the claims related to a fictitious charity called Confident About Autism South Yorkshire. The postcode given corresponded with McDonald's in Hillsborough. Additionally, Jared was accused of submitting to the Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority two invoices from Arnold for work he never completed. The invoices were either rejected or not processed. One of those former caseworkers, who later took O'Mara to employment tribunals, told the court that Jared attended his Sheffield office maybe twice, between November 2018 and April 2019. He cancelled and missed parliamentary appointments and showed signs of sherbet use at meetings in February of 2019. He also protested to Jared Amara when the MP at the time approved contracts without prior vetting from parliamentary authorities. Essentially, when he did rock up to work, he rocked up off his rocker. I wonder if Jared Amara's friends were Kel Brook. In examination, Gareth Arnold told the court that Jared Amara's election was a massive shock. Which is true, Nick Clegg had screwed over the Liberal Democrats to such a degree, Jared O'Mara was guaranteed to win, to be honest. His selection, though, was a bit confusing. The MP was also convinced that John Burko had it in for him. John Burko was the Speaker of the House of Commons, because he had refused a number of his expense claims. Gareth Arnold said that the work he provided Jared O'Mara with was genuine. He would offer media training by role-playing as Jeremy Paxman. It's a weird kink. His second invoice, one of the ones that wasn't processed was a retainer, so Jared could call on him at any time. He also said that he decided to resign after suspecting that Jared O'Mara had drunk a litre of vodka before a BBC Look North interview that Gareth Arnold had arranged, along with accusing him of smoking 60 cigarettes at one stage a day. He also told the court that Jared O'Mara submitted subject access requests to the Labour Party and Unite the Union with a view of suing them under data protection law. Jared's defence said he had failed to follow the correct processes because of administrative ignorance. You're ignorant, that's ignorant. Saying that his claims were ignorant <laughs> or incompetent rather than dishonest. With Jared himself believing that he was entitled to submit them given the genuine assistance he received. Jared though declined to give evidence at the trial. He did not help himself. The defence further asked jurors to consider the effects of his autism. I feel like there's some uh, correlation here. When one goes out of their way to do themselves no favours at every opportunity, being given every single opportunity to improve, to instead decide, swag well family, I'm 60 cigarettes and a litre of vodka because I'm a classy bish and I'm trying to emulate my hero Tyson Fury, is the way forward you know the inevitable response and conclusion is going to be, on the 8th of February 2023, guilty of six counts of fraud. He was also found guilty on three counts of fraud, not guilty on a further three, and um, had two other counts of fraud not guilty of as well. He, he was found guilty of a lot of fraud. Um, one of those he was cleared related to employing a friend as a constituency support officer, uh, because his friend, John Woodliffe, had been charged with one charge of fraud. Thankfully, not 
guilty. With that all in mind, we should probably get to the sentence then, because this one is interesting. We should get out of the way. Gareth Arnold was also found guilty and handed a 15-month term suspended for two years. He does not see a prison, but he was found guilty. He had defended himself and failed. Jared O'Mara, aka inmates number 156, found guilty of many fake expense fraudulent claims, was sentenced to four years in prison. Judge Tom Bayliss told Jared O'Mara that he had abused his position as an MP to commit a series of cynical, deliberate, and dishonest frauds. He experienced financial difficulties caused by a hedonistic lifestyle fueled by the consumption of large amounts of vodka and sherbet. The judge also said that Jared O'Mara did not have a reduced culpability for his crimes following his diagnosis of autism in 2018, saying, You, Jared O'Mara, are a highly intelligent man. You were, I am quite sure, able to exercise appropriate judgment to make rational choices and to understand the nature and consequences of your actions. You have occasionally behaved bizarrely or demonstrated disordered thought. But whether that was caused by your disorder or by your consumption of sherbet or both is neither here nor there so far as this fraud is concerned. You knew perfectly what you were doing with this fraud. You were behaving perfectly rationally. If dishonestly, you were using your autism diagnosis to extract money from IPSA to fund your sherbet and alcohol-driven lifestyle. Sayonara, bitch. 